we're reading out of the book of Philippians today. It's Philippians 4, verse 5. And I know I've done a lot of videos on Philippians 4 before, but I'm just wanting to focus on verse 5 for today. So a little bit of background information on the book of Philippians. It's written by Paul. And I'm going to read out of the YouVersion Bible app. There's an intro, just, you know, when you're studying your own Bible, be sure to go ahead and open the app and look at the intro. It gives you really good background information on the chapter, what it's about, who it's written by, who it's written for. That way you make sure that you're studying the word in context. So I'm just going to read this part of this to you. It says, on his second journey to bring the gospel to the Gentile world, the apostle Paul helped start a church in the city of Philippi. See Acts chapter 16, verses 11 through 40, a colony of retired Roman soldiers. The Philippians became Paul's friends and supporters for the rest of his life. When they heard that he was in Rome as a prisoner, they collected money to assist him and sent it with one of their members, a man named Epaphroditus. Later, Paul sent him back with a letter to thank the Philippians for their friendship and support. Paul knows the Philippians were experiencing a lot of opposition, so he appeals to to his own life as an example of how to respond to hardship with joy. Throughout the whole palace guard, that is, right in the center of Caesar's realm, Paul is boldly making the royal announcement that Jesus is Lord. Paul's desire is that the Philippians will gain the same confidence and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. In an amazing hymn, Paul urges the Philippians to have the servant attitude that Jesus did. He did not grasp his high position, but humbled himself even to the point of death, all for the sake of others. This is the new way to be human that is revealed in God's kingdom. Our citizenship is in God's realm, and so we eagerly await the Savior's return to us. Then he will transform our lowly bodies to become like his glorious resurrected body. I know I said I was only going to read part of that, but the whole thing was just so good. And it gives you really good background information on the book of Philippians. Like it says, um, Paul was in prison in Rome. And he's writing to, to the Philippians here. This is a letter. Um, but we're going to read what he says to them. And it's just, it's such good encouragement for us today in our everyday lives as well. I have a clear sticky note here. Not that it matters, but I'm not writing right on this. I'm going to be writing on the sticky note. And so to prepare for this Bible study, I went ahead and I read the chapter four in the Amplified Bible. I like to read the Amplified Bible when I want some emphasis on a particular verse or something that I feel like God is trying to tell me right now and something that I need to work on right now. And I like to bring in the Amplified Bible. So I'll read it to you. In the Amplified Bible, it says, let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. That is it. That is the one verse <laughs> that I feel like I really needed to hear today. So I was looking up the, in, uh, I wanted to look up the original text in translation of the word gentleness here in verse five. And um, very conveniently, I didn't realize until after when I was cross-referencing cross the enduring word, um, it also mentioned uh, that word gentleness. And basically the Greek for that was apikia. Uh, probably not pronouncing it correctly, but it's on the screen. And it can translate to patience, forbearance, patient mind, softness. And the reason why I like to use the Amplified Bible or even kind of look up the um, original translation of the word is, again, to place emphasis. It allows us to capture actionable um, attributes and steps that we can apply to our lives. It makes me reflect and think about, you know, now I can take these words and journal, you know, how have I been selfish? So if we take, start off with the first word, unselfishness. Um, in this day and age, it's so easy to focus on ourselves and even just the human nature of people, right? We are just selfish by nature. We have, are born selfish, <laughs> um, even as a baby. Um, and while that's okay as a baby, as we grow and mature, we need to shed that. And if selfishness is something that you know that you've struggled with, and maybe someone has told you over and over, you know, make a change. And that's with any of these, you know, um, we need to be more gracious or tolerant of people. Sometimes, you know, not everyone is going to, uh, you know, be your cup of tea. You're not going to always get along perfectly with everyone at all times. And there's going to be times where we need to be tolerant of people or even the people that we love and our family members. How can we be tolerant and show them mercy and patience? Because at the end of the day, this is how God treats us, our loving father. So how can we not 
go ahead and treat other people like that? How can I be more gracious? Let your gentleness, and when you think of the word gentleness, think of all these things, unselfish, tolerant, mercy, patience, graciousness, be evident to all, period. Like there's no, <laughs> there is no stipulation. It's no, um, you know, it doesn't matter if how that person has treated you. It doesn't matter um, you know, maybe they've done something to hurt you. It doesn't matter if they are sorry for it. You know, if, they, if they've asked for forgiveness or not, it doesn't matter. Um, it's saying, let your gentleness be evident to all. And the biggest part of that verse is the Lord is near. We have to remember that things of this world will not last. And when, you know, thinking about this chapter, this chapter talks about worry as well and not being anxious um, and just having God's peace. And when we think about the worries of this world, whether it's tangible things, maybe it's like money or a job, or maybe you just don't have peace in your heart or whatever it is that you're worried about. Maybe it's the world events. We have to remember that here in this life, in our flesh, this is not our end destination. And so when we have that mindset of, okay, well, this is not my permanent home. Um, you know, the Lord is near. Um, you know, one day we will, you know, this, this will be no more. We have to have that heavenly mindset. Also, really having that peace of God that this chapter goes on to talk about, um, you know, if, if there is someone who is just, it just, they just make you upset and you're constantly thinking about them. And again, this chapter is just so good. I love Philippians four. It talks about your thoughts as well. Um, I have this on a shirt. That's how much I love <laughs> this scripture right here that I have in purple Philippians four verse eight. Um, but if you have someone that's constantly on your mind, um, you know, not only should you change your thought pattern so that you can, you know, how can I be more selfless to this person, more tolerant, give more mercy, patient and gracious, but also don't allow that person to take your peace. Don't allow anybody actually to have that much power over your joy and your peace that you are constantly thinking about them in a negative way and becoming upset or, you know, no matter who, even if it's not a person, maybe it's a situation. Really um, focus your thoughts, focus your heart on God and the eternal things, which are the things that matter. And don't allow these things of the world to get your peace. Um, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So such a simple verse, but so much power. And I wanted to focus on it for today's Bible study. Please let me know what you learned. As always, I post a new Bible study video on Wednesdays and Fridays at 7 a.m. Eastern. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again. Bye.